What's up, guys? This is Coach Grant with First Down Training, and today we're going to be breaking down some of the best route running of the 2020 NFL season so far. So we're going to be taking a look at routes from Odell Beckham Jr., DK Metcalf, um, Devontae Adams, Justin Jefferson, Calvin Ridley, just to name a few. And we're going to be talking about just the main things and the main aspects of playing the receiver position, how to get separation off the line, and just how to become a better route runner. So I hope this video gives you guys some value. And guys, if you're a receiver and you don't have a quarterback to throw to you 24-7, check out that link in the description. It says improve your hands in 30 days. 30-day catching program, no quarterback back necessary let's get started with this breakdown so we're gonna be looking at this kind of like comeback and go route or this like stutter go route here from Odell so we're gonna mainly be talking about how he sells this comeback so well how he's able to accelerate up and then make this play okay so let's watch this thing full speed again one more time so he comes off here pushes up outside snaps this thing off violent with his hips three steps to that break keeps his head down accelerates out and a great ball over the top to make this play so let's talk about it let's break this down so when we come off the line here main thing number one this is a number one thing about all route running um, about every single route that you run whether it's from a quick hitch a slant to all the way to this type of a route we got to push vertical we got to self fade and we got to make sure that my hips are what decelerate me right so it's pushing vertical and using that hip drive or that hip drop i should say to create that explosion that drive out of the break at the top of the route so let's talk about how he builds off of that in this so when he's running here we want to sell like we're running a comeback and you see odell does such a great job of pretending like you want to almost think of this db he's got like crap underneath his fingernails and you want to get his hands off right he's trying to touch you he's trying to touch you i'm going to swap those hands i'm going to chop those hands don't let him touch you don't let him get hands because if he doesn't have hands and i suddenly drop my hips and i suddenly get out of a break or i suddenly sell this like double move that's going to get me some separation so you see when odell comes out here he drops into this comeback in stride right He's not chopping his feet down. He's not preparing for this break. That's the thing that a lot of people like. A lot of people do is that then they run like a comeback, a curl, a stop route, or even this kind of a double move. They'll start chopping their steps right before. What they'll do is they'll start to prepare for this break. They'll start to slow down. And what we call that, we call that an indicator, right? An indicator is what we don't want to have on any route. We want to make sure that all my routes look the same. Everything about this route should sell comeback, right? So what does he do? He snaps on this leg, right? And how we decelerate is by dropping my hips. I talked about that. It's not about changing speed, right? You hear a lot of people talk about all the time oh oh well you got to slow down at the top of your about you're trying to slow down no you're trying to create energy you're trying to create energy at the top of the route yes you're obviously going to slow down because we're trying to change direction but it's not about slowing down and then starting back up again it's about creating energy at the top of the route using your hips to shoot you back out of this thing and accelerating off this thing right or accelerating out of this break so you see when he drops right here that's an indicator of the db oh crap i gotta get i gotta make this break i gotta go make a play on this thing i gotta get out of my run or my back pedal if this were like a zone coverage concept right so now odell needs to sell this comeback for three steps, right? So when you guys run a normal comeback, you guys would snap and then you would pivot with this second step and then you'd hook around with this third step again to drive you back out and you'd get out in three steps, right? So that's what we're trying to sell here with Odell. You see how he drops these hips. He's very sudden with this drop. He pivots, hooks around, and he throws, right? This is the main thing that's so important on this type of a route is that you want to make sure that you throw your body down this break. We want to sell like I'm just going snap, pivot, hook around, and then I'm driving out of this thing on a 45 back to the sideline because we want this DB to undercut it. Odell does such a great job of turning with his shoulders, committing his shoulders to this break and really throwing, but at the same time, keeping that toe closed so he keeps the weight on the inside arch of his foot. Right now, obviously, he's not able to think about all this stuff. It's all instinct, but this is stuff that you guys can take away when you guys are working routes on your own and you're trying to understand the concept of routes. This is how you guys can get better, really, focusing on the details. Devil's in the details. So now, when I make this break off of that cut on that double move, it's so important that I keep keep my head down. I drive my arms, I drive my legs, I continue to push vertical to widen the distance with this guy. Anybody can get separation, right? Whether it's at the top of the route or off the line, I consider that both kind of the same thing, like that explosion phase. But can you keep that separation, especially on a double move? We know the ball ain't going to be up right away. The ball's going to be put out there, especially if you have a good quarterback with some air, so I can keep my head down and I continue to push and drive my arms so I can widen the distance. You see how he doesn't look till he's got him by about three steps right here? That's when we want to look for this thing, and we make this play over the top. That's a great job by Odell, working that kind of come back and go start to go however you want to think of it route let's watch it again full speed one more time so make sure i'm pushing vertical i'm snapping i'm dropping suddenly i'm out of this thing three steps i keep my head down i pump those arms so i can widen the distance and make a play over the top so now we're going to be looking at metcalf here so we're going to be talking about how you guys can work this throw by technique and again why selling vertical is so important so especially if you're a guy who's got speed and metcalf has got speed he's a freak athlete probably um in the first half of the season i would say probably the best or if not one of the best receivers um 
in the league right now. And you see this against a top tier corner, right? So the thing about playing DB, why DB is so difficult is because you're playing a guessing game 24 seven. That's why you got to respect the guys that line up at DB because they're, they're just playing a guessing game and they're looking for indicators from you. What are you going to indicate to them that you're making a break or you're going to slow down? Is there going to be a change in speed? But how we can work that as receivers, it's not usually about what the DB does, right? It's about what we do wrong. What did we do wrong that allowed this DB to make a play, right? So when we, it's rare that when we do everything right and the DB still is able to make a play, right? It's rare. It's so rare that that happens. If we do everything right, we should have that mindset that every single play, I should be able to get open. If I do things efficiently, if I have the right timing with my quarterback, and if I have the right technique. So you see when Metcalf comes out here, yeah, 100% it helps to be a freak athlete like him, but this is something you can do even if you're not a freak athlete, even if you're not the fastest guy on the field or the biggest guy on the field. Your technique is what's going to win. At the next level, like college level, especially in the professional level, everybody's good. Everybody's a stud. Everybody's going to be able to play well, and everybody's going to be fast. So it's your technique that matters. So when he comes off here, you see Metcalf, he's got his head down. He's in a 45-degree angle pad level position. He's driving out of there. He's trying to get Gilmore to turn his hips and run right here. So he runs with him, and he's threatened by the vertical. Everything's a fade until it's not. Everything's you're just running right past his DB until it's not. So you see how he keeps his head down here. He's running, running, running. He snaps right now. Snaps on that inside leg, especially on a stop route. This is what I teach my receivers. Some people teach different methods, right? You're going to see a lot of different methods. But what I teach my receivers is on a stop route, you want to snap on the inside leg because you're more likely to get out of it in two steps. You can just snap with the inside, hook around the outside, and just hook up right there. But you see when Metcalf snaps, what does he do with that inside arm? He works that chop. He works that throw by, right? When you got a DB running with you, again, we talked about that a little bit in the Odell clip. You want to pretend like he's got crap underneath his fingernails. He's extending out you. He's running with you. You want to snap and swat him by and throw him by at the exact same time. It's almost like a reflex. You snap, it's like you're pushing off of a wall to just decelerate yourself, and you want your hands to be violent. Anytime you're, you're ripping a DB's hands off or you're throwing him by at the top of the route, not pushing off, obviously, but throwing him by, getting his hands off, that's got to be violent. It's got to be a violent movement, and that's exactly what Metcalf does, and you see how he's able to just stop right on a dime. If you guys can push vertical, not sell um, or not give away what you're trying to do, sell vertical with your pad level, sell vertical with your stride, sell vertical with your arm swings, and everything about this is a fade until it's not, and you use your hips to decelerate you, you will get separation, especially if on like a dig, if it's on a curl, or just this straight up stop route. That's a great job by Metcalf. Let's watch it again full speed one more time. So he's coming out here, push vertical, head down, swat him by. At the exact same time you snap, let's swat this DB by. That's a great job. All right, so now we're going to be looking at this release here from Devontae Adams. So we're mainly going to be talking about this slide release here and when to use it. So a lot of people, you guys have probably all, if you're familiar with, um, you see a lot of receiver videos out there on social media where they work all these fancy releases and stuff like that. And everybody always says, oh, that takes too long. Oh, that's 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 crap. That's not going to work, right? This is a live game situation where Adams is working this kind of slide in out. Right, so slide this DB off his platform, be in a good range, work this in out. The thing about it, you got to know when to use it, right? So if you're a first read on this, like he's running a quick flat route. If you're a first read flat route on this, and we're trying to get it to you right now, probably not going to go with this release. Same thing if you're running a slant. If you're a first read slant, you don't want to slide him out here and work all these moves and then run because the timing's not going to be there. You guys got to know I'm a third read on this play. Quarterbacks maybe going, he's high low in it. Maybe he's going from like post to dig to flat. I got some time to work. I got some time to navigate back there and maybe get some separation. I don't want to get to the spot too quick. So that's the when you use this, right? That's the reason behind the technique. Now, when we slide out here, it's important that anytime you guys work this slide release, we're in a good range. So you see how Adams isn't flat. When you guys slide flat, the DB can just shuffle with you and he ain't going to bite on anything, right? And when you guys slide too far forward, DB can get hands, knock us off this route, and then we don't got anything for us, right? So we want to make sure we're sliding almost like a 45-degree angle, right? Obviously, again, this is not something he's able to think about. This comes from repetition, but that's why we're so detailed. So you guys can actually take something away from this video and go back and work on it. So when we slide into this open space right here, now it's just like I'm playing basketball with him. I got him off this platform, and he's got to make a decision. He's either going to come at me with two hands, and then he's off balance, and I could use my hand technique to get some separation off of him, or he's going to shuffle with me and watch my hips. And if he shuffles with me and watches my hips, I'm here, and I'm throwing this thing just like a crossover. You see how he throws his whole body, and kind of like what we were talking about with that Odell clip, he keeps his toe forward. Why is that? that's so important because where your burst is and where your explosion is is on that inside arch of your foot so you see when he throws here it's like a basketball move right he goes in out he slides 
in out, working that cross when he's pushing off of his inside leg. That's like a power step. When you go right left, that right leg is quick. You shoot it in the grass, but it pushes you out wide. You throw your hip wide and you keep that weight on the inside arch of your foot because if you can throw your upper half and still be able to maintain explosion back out, you could widen the distance. And again, so what? I get some separation. I get him off his platform. What do I got to do? I got to accelerate out of the break, right? Three phases of every route. You got the stem, you got the break point, which is like in this case, the release, and then you got the acceleration phase. And that's what we got to use with pushing off that inside arch. I got to drive. So I have that acceleration. It's like a 40 yard dash. That starts got to be explosive. So you have that acceleration throughout the route. And what does he do? He pumps those arms. He drives out of this break to widen. This DB's not even in the camera angle. That's a great job here by Adams working that slide release. Slide release is so important for receivers to understand when to use it and the technique behind it. Let's watch it again full speed one more time. So he comes off here. He slides. One, two. Throw that body. Make sure I accelerate out and run those arms. That's a great job by Devontae Adams. So now we're going to be looking at this kind of pressure step route here from Amari Cooper, this post route. So biggest thing about this route is this is how you guys can attack zone coverage. <clears throat> Excuse me. So when you got a DB who's in zone coverage, facing the quarterback, bailing out of there, you got some room to work. What's something that you guys need to do? Attack his cushion, attack that front hip, step on his toes, however you want to think of it. But you got to take the fight to him. You got to take it straight to him to try to get him to bail out of there or try to threaten him vertically. Because what's the whole point of zone coverage? Like if they're coming out to cover three, cover four, that corner's off. What's he thinking? He's trying to prevent the ball to go over his head, right? I'm not, I don't want this guy to just run right by me because that's my main job, especially if it's like a cover three look, right? Which I'm assuming it is because they hit him on this post. So what do we got to do? We got to come out of here. We got to sell vertical with my pad level, right? I got to come out. And now there are times where, don't get me wrong, where you can change up tempo, right? And if you guys want more videos on that, you can check out this channel, my receiver playlist. There are a lot of videos on tempo, how to change up tempo, when to change up tempo. But right now we're going to be focusing on pushing vertical, right? So Cooper's coming out here full speed. Where are we attacking? The weak hip of this DB, trying to get him to turn and run, trying to get him to bail out of there fast, right? So now what they call this is they call this a vertical set right here. This is just like a little bit of like a power step or a pressure step to the inside, where we go, bam, and we're trying to sell like I'm just going a quick little head fake to the inside and get into his blind spot and running a fade. Now, the thing about this is you could do a couple different things off of this. You hit this pressure step. Maybe I burst up for three steps to his blind spot, and I break it off and run a comeback. Maybe I break, break up to his pressure. I use this pressure step, break up one, two, and I run an out route, right? But what we're going to do here is we're going to try to sell vertical. So you see how what Cooper does here? He uses this step to shoot him out wide, right? That pressure step and that vertical set should give you a ton of burst and a ton of explosion to his blind spot because now you could go one, two, three steps to his blind spot and this DB is going off the field, right? When you're in his blind spot, that's what they call this. That's where you want to try to get to against zone coverage because he's always got a blind spot in zone coverage. That's where he's going off the field. And if we could get a DB going off the field and he's thinking, oh crap, he's in there. I don't want to get beat over the top. We could maybe force a speed turn where he turns all the way out of here and has to run with us or he hesitates, right? Like he does here. He hesitates. Now I do my job of accelerating off that break and I snap my head around and make this play. It's a great rider by Cooper. Let's watch it again full speed one more time. So coming off here fast, breaks to the post, or no, I'm ex excuse me, breaks to that blind spot, three steps to that blind spot off that vertical set, pressure step. That's a great job here. So now we're going to be talking about this route here from Thielen. We're going to be talking about how you guys can sell a double move, okay? That's the main focus on this. So he's going to be working like this slant out concept here. Now with this slant out, again, on the goal line, the thing is we're trying to get this DB to think, Okay, this is a slant. I want to drive on this slant. If you guys, maybe the team that you guys play on, you guys are a slant heavy team. You guys run a lot of slants, maybe a lot of drags. This is a great way to get some separation on this type of a route, okay? Or a whip route. A whip route would be the very similar to this. So. Or a pivot. Some people call it a pivot. I get that question asked a lot. It's all the same. So when we come off here and we break to the inside, what's the first thing that shoots around? Thielen's eyes, right? Now, everybody loves to say that all the receivers, oh, you got to sell with your eyes, sell with your eyes. But the DB shouldn't be technically looking at your eyes anyways because your eyes will lie. That's just that's just a fact of the matter. And your shoulders will lie. He should be watching those hips, right? Until that ball, until he's got to break on that ball, obviously, you know what I mean? Obviously, there's situations. Don't get me wrong. Um, but mainly it should be hips. So I'm not going to tell you you want to commit your eyes to sell a double move. You got to commit your eyes, you got to commit your shoulders, you got to commit your hips and you got to keep the same speed. So it's a big 3. So big 3 is eyes, body, speed. That's what you guys got to be focused on a double move whether it's a post corner or a post out. We're going to talk about a post out in a second um with Ridley, but when we sell any kind of double move, I got to keep the same speed that I have off the break because we're trying to sell slant. Nobody runs a slant half speed. Nobody breaks to the slant and just kind of jogs unless they're sitting in a window, right? So to get him to commit his hips, 
I got to have speed. I got to try to cross his face fast. I got to keep the same arm drive. I got to keep the same pad level. I don't break, prepare for the break. And I snap my eyes and my hips, and then I snap it off violently, right? He's got powerful two steps. He drops those hips, and he's violent with those hips. And then what do we do? We swat that arm by. And again, what do we talk about with Devontae Adams? Anytime I get some separation, can I keep that separation? Let's drive those arms. Let's make sure I accelerate out. Let's widen the distance with this DB and make this play. That's a great job here by Thielen working this slant out. I think it's very important on any double move, out and up, post corner, corner post, however you guys want to think of it, any kind of like squirrel route, maybe a triple move, right, a post corner post, however you want to think of it, dino, dino route. You got to sell with your eyes, got to sell with your body, and you got to have speed, and you got to be sudden when you get out of the break. So that suddenness, because the suddenness of your break and the explosion of your break, shoots you back out to that acceleration phase. Let's watch this thing again, full speed. So he breaks here, snaps it off, breaks to the out. Make sure we accelerate out of there with my arms and use that break point to generate some force. Okay, so now we're gonna be looking at this, um, like kind of hitch and go or this curl and go right here, very similar to the first route we looked at with Odell. This is Justin Jefferson. So you see how when he comes here again, pushing vertical, snaps it off. Breaks that thing to the inside, and again, we're just going to talk about mainly the technique behind it, right? I apologize for the blurriness of the clip. I wish it had a little bit better quality, but this is the best we could get. So when we snap this thing off on a hitch, you want to drop your hips, right? Because especially when this DB is an off man, where is he looking? Hips. So when you drop your hips, that draws him in. That car, that's He's like, oh, shit, i got to make a break on this thing. I don't want to get beat on a hitch. Now, if I sell this thing correctly with my body and my steps are fast and I'm able to break out of this thing fast, I'm going to get some separation. So you see how when he runs up into it, he snaps it off, he drops those hips. What does the second step do? He pivots, right? We talk about that on that comeback. You snap down into a break. You pivot on your second step. Then you hook your third step around, right? This is his third step right here. And what's he doing? He's got to throw his whole body to the inside four, right? And that fourth step is what bursts him out. And you, again, he see his toes are open forward or his, his toes stay straight forward. His toes don't open up here to where his knee opens up and then his hip opens up and he's got no burst. The weight stays where? Inside arch of his foot because that inside arch of his foot is what's going to push him to the outside and he can keep his head down. You see right here a little bit of a hold of that jersey, but you keep your head down. We widen the distance and we make that play over the top. That's a great job working this hitch and go. Again, when we snap this thing off and we're working any kind of hitch and go, these are two great ways. Sometimes guys like to fully turn and it kind of depends on the timing of the play and the scheme that you guys are running. But anytime we got to come back and go like this, curl and go, hitch and go, I snap, pivot, hook the left around, throw the right leg to the inside. I throw my body. I get a head and shoulder fake because where's the DB watching? He's watching my torso. He's watching my hips. So I got to sell with my upper half. Let's watch it again. Full speed. Snaps it off. Body to the inside. Make sure I pump those arms and accelerate out. That's a great job here by Justin Jefferson. I think he's been tearing it up this year, too. Really excited to see how he plays. So now we're going to be looking at this post out here against zone coverage, right? So same idea, kind of talking about this double move. I just really like how he gets out of this thing, how he changes direction here. So let's watch it full speed. So Ridley, again, what's he doing? Attacking that DB, attacking that weak hip, snaps it off, and makes sure we accelerate out. So this post out, they call it a blaze out, too, because when you snap that thing off off of the post, it's like a blaze out. So, again, outside leverage DB, zone coverage. Where should I attack? I want to attack his front hip, right? Try to threaten him vertically. Try to widen him out. So when we break to that post, he has to overcommit on it, right? So again, he's coming off here, breaks to the outside. Where's he attacking? Attacking that weak hip or that front hip of the DB, right? Trying to get him to turn and bail out of there. So when I break to the post, bam, I'm here. I'm sudden. Everything about this says post. You see how he doesn't prepare for the break and he doesn't round into this break. It's sudden. It's a sudden break. Pops this thing off and then he's three steps to the post. Now when I get to the post, you want to look at his body. Commits his body, keeps the same speed. He does not sell with his eyes. So again, but this still is able to get some separation with this DB because that DB's in zone coverage. He's able to feel him go to the post. Okay, now I want to go make a break on this thing. How do I change direction on this? i got to be violent with my snap. And you see how he's able to get his chest forward. That's what a lot of people do when they snap down is their chest is vertical and their chest is up and they sit back on their heels. You're not going to be able to change direction like that. When you guys snap down and when you guys get out of a curl break or any kind of 45 break or this kind of like blaze out look, you want your chin to go to your knee. You want to have your pad level going forward because if I'm going forward, I could keep the same explosion. Like I said, it's not about stopping. It's about creating energy. And if I create energy at the top, you see how he's here. He snaps. He pivots that second step because that gets his hips down on the 90, hooks the third step around. And what does he do? Snaps the head around and rips those arms because that helps his hips get back on that 90 degree level. Uh, 90 degree level. And because I sold it so well, what's this DB doing? He's speed turning. They call it a speed turn for a reason because he's going to be fast out of there. So if I continue to drive and accelerate, balls out on time, I'm going to get some separation and be able to make this play. That's a great route here by Calvin Ridley working this thing. Let's watch 
watch it again full speed one more time. Zone coverage. Attack the weak hip. Break to the post. Sell with my speed. Sell with my body. Snap this thing off. Get your chest going forward. Be violent with those hips. Let's watch it again. So he's coming out here. Brace to the post. One, two. Snap it off. Snap, pivot, hook around. Run those arms and accelerate out. That's a great route there by Calvin Ridley. All right, guys. I really appreciate it. If you guys watched this whole video, I really want to thank you. That really means a lot to me. I hope this video gave you some value. Again, if you're a receiver and you want to get um, better hands and you don't have a quarterback to uh, – to really throw to you all the time and give you those 100 footballs a day, that program is going to be perfect for you because um, it will help you guys. Just overall catching ability, grip strength, hand-eye coordination. If you guys have any questions at all, um, leave those in the comments below. Again, check out that link in the description to get better hands, and I'll see you guys next time.